Well, I'm back. Thanks to everyone who reached out after my mom passed. It was really appreciated. Also, thanks to Tom Martins, who you can see coming into my driveway, and he drove all the way up from Maryland with a Chris Craft 283 flywheel forward, the engine, and a Paragon transmission. Spare parts for Miss Chippewa, or who knows what in the future. Thanks, Tom, and his brothers for driving up. Now let's get into episode 18 of the Wooden Boat Experience. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. First, I needed to see what the top of this work surface looks like again. Now, Gary Green, who will be coming soon to help finish Unbeknownst, is going to be shocked that I'm cleaning up before he gets here. While I was ready to begin working on the deck and rear cockpit of Unbeknownst, rough cut white oak wasn't what I needed. So I need something deep here so it's strong this way, but I didn't have anything that was that deep that was very wide. So I'm also going to add a piece on here to give it some structure side to side. I'm going to countersink these, put a nice little stainless steel screw in there, and tie the two together. If I process a lot of wood, I cover the boat up to avoid some of the dust. Plus, there's a lot of sun exposure in this building. The new chisels were a big help with this job. Now, I'm impatient. I just had to see what this deck was going to look like. There must be some scrap cardboard around this place somewhere. I think I should have cut this cardboard apart ahead of time. What a pain in the neck. Okay, there's a straight edge, let's lay it out. This is a kick panel for the rear seat. I 
I was able to get two sheets of half inch marine plywood locally at only half again as much as last year. The kick panel needed a white oak stiffener. There's a lot that goes into this framing. How does one piece affect the other? Can I still access the area around it? And is it strong enough? Now that I knew the stiffener would work, I screwed it on permanently. I'm using stainless steel screws on all of this deck and framework. See if I can quickly explain how I figured out how to make this floor. Well, I don't know if I figured it out yet because I didn't cut it yet, but this is an odd shape. This is where the floor, the plywood for the floor sets on top of these frames, um, beams, I guess you would call them. I'm taking this piece of flat wood and I'm putting it on top of that and running it out until it hits this uh, rib here. And I'm putting a pencil line there. So you can see, maybe you can't, but there's a pencil line here, there's one here, and there's one here, and it's kind of a curve. I also figured it out here where there is no rib and estimated back here. Then I measured, and from here to here is 29 and a half inches. So these are running parallel, thank goodness. So I know I need 29 and a half inches wide, and then I have these lines to measure to here. I did the same thing over on the other side on the starboard side and then I just ran across on the top of this frame put this end of the tape measure on that line brought the other end of the tape measure to the other line and made those measurements and it's almost like lofting so I end up with these points 29 and a half if you can see this 29 and a half is my width and way up here is 62 the next one is 61 and 5 eighths next one is 39 and a half then um that's not right, 39, 59 and a half, sorry, 57. And then I'm not sure about the last one. I'm going to see where that curve lands and makes it look kind of fair. Um, hopefully this will work. I'll make a nice, I'll put a batten across there. We'll make it look good. We're going to have to add a margin board here because these are going to, right in here on these ribs is going to be ceilings like in the front. But you don't want to step on one of those thin ceilings between the ribs. You'd end up cracking it. So the plywood will come to here, and I'll build a margin board that goes right here. That'll be a thicker piece of mahogany. And then from about here up will be the, the uh, ceilings. So that's how it's supposed to work. We'll see if this plywood I cut fits in here nicely, because I am sick of standing on ribs and frames and beams, especially seeing how my foot is still, heal still healing up. Well, that's nice to finally be walking on a floor in the back of this boat. Wow. Now we'll know if the seat's too low. Not bad. Okay, back to it. There were a surprising number of fine adjustments to the seats. Leave room for cushions, don't scrape the sides, all that kind of stuff. You don't think of it ahead of time.
I need a thin strip below to support the seat backs. You can see the rear is starting to come together. We got a floor in. Obviously that'll get painted. These seats will get painted, but these seats will also be upholstered. This one actually flips up with a hinge. The one over there, you just lift out, but it's got a couple pieces of wood that hold it in place. And I think these two on the back, I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna come in to like a slot with a piece back there. And then on the inside, you'll open the engine compartment and there'll be a piece of wood that you twist that releases them so you can pull them out of there. Just don't want them flopping open if the water's rough on the river, which it is sometimes. Haven't messed with the front seats at all, but they're not that far away from being fixed. And sorry about the noise with the wind. Next week, the engine hatch will be mocked up. And I hope to get the plywood instead of this cardboard in place. Nice mahogany plywood. That will be finished bright, that whole section. <clears throat> excuse me and um this is all going to be painted and all this plywood on the seats gets upholstered and that gets painted same as the front which you can kind of see up there it's gray with non-skid so when you look at this when it's all together you'll have the whole inside and the front will all be finished bright blue upholstery this will all be finished bright blue upholstery that will be gray floor paint and then that's finished bright. Remember, there's a piece that goes all the way across from the gray to the gray there. And then I'm going to make little doors for those compartments. And obviously, the, that deck is finished bright. So there'll be a lot of mahogany look to this. And there will not be another sea skiff like this one. I'm not the only one who's been working on boats. Bill Briggs has installed the engine we saw running on a stand in episode 17. And Gary Green has finished the hacker he was working on. All right. Hacker's all done, waiting for him to come pick it up. All right, there's the hacker leaving. His wife, Yoon, did a great job in the striping. And here are a couple of shots of it in the water sent to me just today. We're going to end this episode with us unloading the 283 from Tom Martins. Thanks again, Tom. I'll see you next week in episode 19.